Hey YouTube, uh, well we're finally getting to see me take all this stuff off on the back wall. We're clearing everything off here. Uh, until I get my pip, I'll still probably keep my inverters hooked up, but I'm still going to take them off. They'll just be sitting down here on the floor, you know. At least get something out of the solar panels. Wind turbine, that'll be put on brake. So that'll stay on brake until I get the inverter in, or I'll set something up for a 48 volt system. Uh, batteries and all that stuff, that'll be all put in a different spot. All the um, APC units will be all taken out of the equation. All of this is going to get cleaned up. A lot of stuff to do here, so I'm going to have to get to work. So, this video you show me, you'll see me taking all this stuff off, getting it out of the way. Next video, uh, you might see me put the piece of plywood up here because I do have to get it cut and sized. Uh, there's a 4x8 sheet of pegboard up there. I'm not going to take that down. I'm going to leave the pegboard up there, put the plywood right over that pegboard. There ain't no need to take it down. It's good and secured to the wall. So, the plywood's going to go right over the top of that. I haven't decided if I want to take this down. It's got my networking and stuff on it. It's like a little set of shells. I might take it down. But the plywood's going to go all the way over to that direction there. Right right above that little uh, plastic box you see sitting here on the counter. There's a seam there. That's where that pegboard stops. That's where that uh, piece of plywood go to. And it's going to come all the way over for a full 4x8 sheet of plywood. It's 3 quarter inch, so it's thick. That's going to mount to the wall. That's going to hold all my equipment. That's going to hold the transformers up there. Uh, the transformer is going to go close where this is since I've got multiple 2x4s behind there. Um, I might put another couple 2x4s back there so I might end up pulling the uh, pegboard off anyhow so I can put more 2x4s back there so we can actually shore this up a little better if we need to. But I doubt we're going to. That should hold the weight. So, I'm going to fast forward everything. I'm going to get to work.
Here you go, I'll pause the video right here. Here's one of my uh, homemade solid state relays. Alright, and this uh, powers the negative side of a uh, system, so you just run your negative line in one end, negative line in the other. Negative line coming in from your power source, negative line going out to your uh, item that you're going to power. Four wire setup to turn it off and on. It's pretty nifty. That's all I had to say about that. Back to tearing this thing apart.
All right, everything's off the wall tube. All right, I've got a bit of mess everywhere else to get cleaned up, but all that stuff is off the wall. Got a couple screws to take out. I ain't gonna bore you with that. Yeah, it's all off there. That's where my new pip transformer go there. Another transformer right beside it, and have breakers. A little bit of everything on there. There's my battery bank. As you can tell, I took that top tier off. Because that battery bank, I'm going to slide right there against the wall. I'll put the other tier together and they'll be sitting beside it. Because I'll try to see if I can't get eight more of these little batteries. Alright, those are still active. I've got them all plugged in. They're still running. I just got them sitting on the ground. So that's where those will stay. Alright guys, while you guys were away from uh, the screen, I also wired up my uh, battery bank here for 48 volts. 48 volt bank on top. 48 volt bank on the bottom series series and you'll know something with all battery banks the way you should do it I've got one positive at the top that's the positive line up here and then I've got the negative some people would automatically put the negative here but I don't since I want my battery bank to charge balance wise I put the negative on the bottom bank so positive negative now if this was a much longer bank let's say I had like just in case has his setup just think this is one of his small ones <laughs> very small he actually has uh, six 48 volt banks in parallel series alright if I had three more of those same thing I put positive on one end then I would put my negative up here everything would go through and come back around up that way the whole entire battery banks get charged and it pulls from the battery bank evenly so that's how you want to wire up your battery bank okay guys all right youtube as you can tell i've uh wired up my battery bank for the 48 volts i made myself a small little 48 volt battery charger i got my uh, battery extra on here i'll do a review on this bad boy once we get things done all right and that's my desulfator battery banks at 55.18 volts I can take this up to 58 volts that would be the uh, the float charge or the maximum charge on here if you look on the battery bank here All right, and this is how you, all, you always want to read your batteries and see exactly what voltage it needs alright 14.6 volts is your absorption mode charge volts 13.8 so if you want 13.8 is a good volt for this so 13.8 to 14.6 and if you multiply that times 4 that's what your maximum voltage would be uh, I've got mine at 55 volts so it's a decent charge for this battery bank if I want to put more power into it I can absorb more power up to 14.6 per cell alright that's pretty much it right now guys um, until next weekend when I start putting this stuff up, getting it all cleaned up, getting more things up there, getting these transformers put up, get more of my other stuff cleaned out. I still haven't decided what I want to do with that mess yet. I think I might clean it up, get rid of some of it, like that old DVD player, laptop bag, get all that crap out of there, Mountain Dew bottles. Uh, it looks like CLR, hard drive, it's my network NAS drive security camera all kinds of junk up there breakers and stuff I need to get that cleaned up got my wind turbine on break all I did is just wire the splice here and just plug them in each one that way the wind turbine don't turn so that's on break so that's pretty much at it is it for right now YouTube so please comment like subscribe and be ready for the next video next weekend talk to you guys later